Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the Risky User and Confirm Compromise APIs that are part of Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. Now, Identity Protection allows you to understand if there's any risk associated with a user's account or their sign-in behavior. So for example, if I'm logging in from an anonymous IP address, there's gonna be risk associated there. Or if I have an account that uh, is maybe has credentials found in a public place like up for sale on the dark web, obviously there's risk there as well. And so Identity Protection, as it uh, accumulates all of these different signals and using machine learning, it's going to assign a risk score on a low, medium, or high basis to that user account or that sign-in behavior. Now, this is important because I can use conditional access to then be able to block a user's uh, access to a given resource or maybe force a password reset, which requires MFA, or do a number of other things. I did a video on this a while back. See up above for a link to risk-based conditional access. Now, today I wanna to talk about the API side of this. Okay, so why is that important? Well, really two reasons why. Number one, if you're a security ISV and you've got you know, software and application that you make, you can actually um, receive programmatically that risk state information about a given user's account and see if there's low, medium, or high risk. And then you can also uh, send a signal back to Azure Active Directory and say, hey, I think that user's account might be risky. Go ahead and confirm compromise and set it as high risk. Okay, so I could do that via an API. And the other reason why this might be important is maybe you're a SOC analyst or maybe you're a security engineer and you wanna do PowerShell scripting or you have a homegrown application you wrote. There could be a number of different reasons why you wanna use this API. Maybe it's a, a, a Azure Sentinel uh, automation playbook that you wanna run some downstream commands. It could be anything, right? So let's take a look at how this API works by doing some demos here. All right, let's jump over to the demo. I'll put a link in the video description to the documentation for the API and you can read more about this. But today we're gonna to go through a, a few of these different methods in the API. We're going to set a user as a high risk using confirm compromise. We're then going to read the details of that user's uh, risk and then we're going to dismiss it. So it's pretty easy. Now we can also run a command here to list out all the risky users in the environment. Uh, maybe you might wanna do that for your custom app. And then you could also list out history. Now, when you click on one of these, like confirm a risky user as compromised, and you scroll through this, it'll tell you what permissions you need. Uh, generally speaking, you need identity risk user.readwrite.all to be able to do this with an Azure Active Directory. It's gonna tell you the endpoint here, and then it's gonna tell you what to put in the request. Uh, notice there's different examples for JavaScript, uh, you know, Objective-C, C-sharp. I'm gonna use HTTP today. Now, how I'm going to do this is using the Graph Explorer. And this is just available at developer.microsoft.com. I'm signed in here to my Azure Active Directory tenant as a global admin. And if I go to uh, select permissions and I just type in uh, risk, uh, notice I've consented for this account to get permissions to do identity risk event dot read dot all and identity risk event dot read write dot all. Uh, that's required to be able to uh, run this in addition to identity risky user as well, right? Now, I wanna be really clear about something, folks. You would not use Graph Explorer in production. This would be your custom script or the app that you built or something else, right? I'm just doing Graph Explorer to, to demonstrate this capability to you, all right? Okay, so we're gonna go to Azure Active Directory inside the Azure portal, we're gonna pull up the security blade and then we're gonna click on identity protection and then we're gonna click on risky users. Right now, there's no risky users found in the directory. That's good. So that means my end users can log into uh, applications as they need to do their job and life is good. However, let's pretend for a moment that we have a user who has some risk associated with their account. And maybe this third-party security solution discovered that risk. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the end user has a device, an endpoint, that got compromised or has malware on it. And we want to go notify Azure to directory that the user's identity might be compromised as well. There could be a number of different reasons why we want to do this. So we're going to use the API here to run that. So I have a little cheat sheet going. And what we're going to do is uh, run a few things here. So we're first going to set the endpoint 
And we're just gonna set the endpoint here to identity protection, risky users, confirm compromise. Now we gotta make sure we're using V1.0. Uh, every API that Microsoft has also has a beta version of that same API. So obviously you wanna make sure you use the production V.1.0. And we're gonna change this from a get to a post. And then in the body of the request, we're going to put the user ID, just like that, okay? Now you get the user ID from Azure Active Directory. So if I pull up my user here, in this case, Adele, under object ID, you will see uh, that that's the ID. Now, of course, I could pr I could pull this programmatically via the, the, uh, the Azure Active Directory uh, uh, API if I need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this query. And we're setting, for Adele here, we're setting on her user ID, we're setting high risk via confirm compromise. So we're actually confirming back to Azure Active Directory and setting uh, this risk state administratively that we believe Adele's account has been compromised. So again, this could be coming from a third party security solution. It could be coming from a PowerShell script you run as a SOC analyst. It could be part of a, an Azure Sentinel automation playbook. It could be almost whatever you want, right? Okay, so once I run that, uh, I'm gonna switch over to I identity protection. Actually, before I do that, I wanna, I wanna test this, okay? So I actually created a conditional access rule or, or policy rather for this. And let me show you this policy. So this is saying if my user Adele tries to sign into any cloud app and the condition of high user risk is detected, then block access. Now you can even create this programmatically via the conditional access API as well. I just created it manually here in the, in the portal, in the UI, and that's enabled. So what that's gonna allow me to do is actually block access to all my apps if Adele's account is indeed risky, which we just set that risk state via uh, the API here. So now if we go over to identity protection, and I'm just gonna refresh this page, in just a few moments, we will see Adele's user account show up here as having uh, the risk state being set. This usually takes a few moments to propagate. So let's pause the video and we'll come back in just a moment once this is finished. Okay, it's been a few minutes and here you can see upon refreshing the page that we do have a user that has risk associated here. And you can see that Adele Vance, our test user, um, the risk state is confirmed compromise, risk level is high. And when I click on the username, I could see some of these details like the risk state, risk level, and I could see details that admin confirmed user compromise, meaning this was said administratively that we actually believe the user's account's compromised, so we're gonna assign high risk. Boom, done. Now in the UI here, I can come in, I can dismiss this, I can block that user from signing into Azure Active Directory if I want, you know, force a password reset. Uh, I could do a number of different things. But let's go back to the API and let's pull these same details programmatically using the API. So let's change our endpoint here. And I'm gonna go back to my, my uh, cheat sheet and let's change the endpoint. Now, we're gonna change this from a post to a get. And then in our endpoint, we're gonna use slash risky users slash that object ID or that user ID of Adele, okay? And then the request body, we're just gonna make that blank and we're gonna run the query. Boom, okay, 200 green check mark, success. And when we come down here, we can see those same details as we saw in the Azure portal here. So risk levels high, risk state confirmed compromise, risk detail, admin confirmed compromised, who it is, so on and so forth. Awesome. All right, so we were able to pull that via the API and I could put that back into my app or I can put it into a script or do whatever I wanna do with it. So now that the risk is set to high on Adele's account, let's try to sign in. So let's go back here and let's try to sign in to Teams as Adele. So we're just gonna go to teams.microsoft.com. We're gonna try to sign in. Done. Stopped in my tracks, or those of you who watch my other videos, I say, boom, stopped in your tracks. Your account is blocked. We detect suspicious activity on your account. Sorry, the organization you're trying to access restricts at-risk users, yada, yada. So that is my conditional access policy in action, blocking user accounts that are at high risk. Pretty cool, right? So now let's go back to the API and let's dismiss this risk. 
And remember, you can dismiss it both inside the Azure portal by clicking on the ellipsis here and choosing dismiss user's risk, or I can do it programmatically via the API. So we're just gonna change this from a post, or sorry, from a git to a post. And then back to my cheat sheet here, we're gonna change the endpoint to slash risky users slash dismiss. And then we're going to paste in the request body. Oh, whoops, wrong field. Paste in the request body here, the user ID and object ID, and then we're gonna run that query. 200 green check mark, came back successful. And uh, that's now going to dismiss the risk on this user's account. And then we should be able to sign in again here in just a moment. So if we switch back over to identity protection, usually this takes a few moments for it to propagate. So I'm gonna pause the video here and come back once this has been dismissed. And we're back. So that took a little while longer than I expected because I actually had to go refill my coffee cup. Uh, so now that we're back, as you can see, I refreshed the page and no risky users are found. And in fact, if we rerun our, uh, our API query here, uh, let's change this from a post to a get, and then let's change our endpoint to the GUID here of, of that user with that object ID, and then clear out our request body. Let's see if there's any details here. So after I run the query, check it out. Risk level none, risk state has been dismissed, risk detail admin dismissed, all risk for user. And that's confirmed here in the UI, all right? So pretty cool stuff, right? Again, you can do all of this via the uh, the Graph API here. And uh, you know I can also list out all risky users. So if we change our endpoint here to slash identity protection slash risky users uh, with nothing in the body, it should return all of the um, risky users in the environment. So let's run the query. And here I can see all the users and you can see that um, there's a few users here that had some risk associated like Pradeep here, um, it got dismissed, but there's some history there with Pradeep. There's Adele who, uh, who we just tested with, Alan, so on and so forth. And then if we go back to the documentation here and we scroll up to risky user, and we go down to uh, list history. I can then also pull the history for that given user as well. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now let's try to sign into Teams now that we have no risk associated with Adele's account. So let's browse to teams.microsoft.com, try to sign in. Look at that, signed in successfully, and now she can use Teams. So this is pretty cool, right? Combining conditional access with the risky user and confirmed compromise APIs. And I'm just showing you kind of the tip of the iceberg here, folks. There's so much more that can be done. In fact, let's pivot and let's talk about some other examples. Okay, you just saw some really cool capabilities. So I wanna respect your time. Uh, but before I let you go, I just wanna show you two quick slides. The first one is how to think about confirmed compromise API. And so again, if you're a security ISV or you've got some kind of an application or a Sentinel automation playbook or PowerShell script or whatever it may be, administratively, you could set that user's account to high risk and then let conditional access kick in or, or do a number of other things. Now, if you use that, uh, that risky user API, remember we did that git command and we can retrieve the details of that risky user. And then within my own application, maybe I'm a, an ISV or an automation playbook, I can then do whatever I want with that information once I retrieve it. So I can go run commands downstream somewhere. Again, the possibilities are endless and that's what makes this so cool and so inspirational. All right, folks, um, I hope you found value in this video. Uh, I really enjoy making them. If, if give me a thumbs up, that really does help me out if you did like the video. Um, if you didn't like it, give me some feedback. I always want to improve. And if you want to see more videos, please click on the subscribe button because I do have new videos coming out every week. All right, well, I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. I hope you have a great day yourself, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.